Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Yu Chen from the uh, Department of Laboratory Medicine at uh, Dr. Ever Chalmers Regional Hospital, Providence Health Network in uh, Fairwickton, New Brunswick, Canada. Today, it's my honor to discuss with you uh, the usefulness of uh, estimated average glucose in patient care. I have nothing to disclose related to the commercial interest uh, related to this presentation. There are three objectives. Uh, number one, uh, I'd like to uh, overview and debate around the estimated average glucose, EAG, with you. Number two, I'd like to discuss the usefulness of EAG in patient care interpretation. And lastly, uh, I'd like to discuss the usefulness of EAG in uh, glycemic control and uh, cardiovascular risk reduction. So what's EAG? Um, EAG is a fairly a new uh, concept derived by the A1C-derived average glucose ADAG study uh, in uh, 2008. Uh, they basically we could uh, 507 uh, enormous subjects and uh, they measured the A1C value along with the measured average glucose value from this patient. And they found that uh, A1C value correlates very well to the measured average glucose. So they're thinking to drop in a formula based on their uh, 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 estimated average glucose uh, unit they're going to report in a milligram per decimeter or uh, millimolar per liter. There are two different formulas to uh, calculate the estimated average glucose based on the A1C value. So for instance, if uh, A1C value is a six, the estimated A1C value uh, will be 126 milligram per decimeter or uh, 7.0 uh, millimolar per liter. And then the, in brackets, that's a 95 confidence interval. Um, so for instance, uh, uh, A1C value of six, the EAG will be 126, but the 95% of the confidence interval could be uh, 100 to 152. Okay. And since the emerging of this concept, American Diabetic Association quickly adopted into its uh, uh, standards of uh, medical care in diabetes in 2010 and 2011 and so on. Um, in, uh, and then uh, AACC, the American Association of Clinical Chemistry uh, dropped uh, this concept as well and uh, advocate that uh, all laboratories in the United States to report a EAG along with the hemoglobin A1C. Uh, however, uh, there are always some debate on the uh, pros and the cons of reporting EAG uh, along with the hemoglobin A1C. And we can see that in uh, scientific uh, publications in clinical chemistry, and also among uh, scientific societies, uh, there are always uh, debates as well. For instance, um, Canadian Society of Clinical Chemists and the Canadian Association of Medical Biochemists had a joint position uh, statement uh, clearly indicate that reporting EAG uh, is not recommended. Okay, so what are the issues with EAG? Um, Number one, uh, the equation was generated only by one study uh, with a limited sample size, 507. A glucose value used, it's about a decade ago. And at that time, um, are subjected to uh, analytical accuracy limitations compared to the current uh, technologies. And uh, the EAG between uh, A1s, the, the relationship between A1C and the EAG is uh, very variable. 
For instance, the EAG um, for a hemoglobin A1C is 7.0 millimolar per liter. However, the 95's confidence interval uh, spans a range of for three millimolar per liters from 5.5 to 8.5 uh, millimolar per liter, which crosses a range of a normal uh, impaired good blood glucose and a well-established diabetes ranges. And uh, certainly uh, there are several studies uh, have demonstrated the uh, discordance between the A1C uh, derived EAG value with the measured average glucose values in uh, certain populations. For instance, pregnant women, uh, African-Americans and uh, uh, Asian populations and pediatrics, right? Um, the College of American Pathologists uh, did a survey in 2013. Um, they found that uh, with the advocate of uh, uh, ADA, American Diabetic Association, uh, the laboratories in the uh, United States reporting EAG uh, did increase from 70% in 2009 to uh, 37% in uh, 2013. Um, however, about half of those laboratories report EAG uh, used uh, uh, the correct equation, 51%, and 49% of laboratories reporting EAG um, actually did not use the correct equation. That's kind of a surprising. Okay, there are two assumptions for the EAG. And uh, number one is uh, uh, supposed to use with this uh, uh, reporting to improve the interpretation of patient care. Okay, the, the rationale is that because uh, the reporting units for glucose and the hemoglobin A1C varies a lot uh, among uh, uh, Europe, states, and uh, Canada, we can see uh, all reporting different jurisdictions reporting uh, this pretty much standard test in in different uh, units. So no wonder uh, patients or even uh, healthcare providers may be confused by the uh, the re results from a simple test of glucose and the hemoglobin A one C. So. Um, and, and uh, also a uh, study indicates that the better understanding or better knowledge of uh, hemoglobin A1C values uh, did improve their uh, patient uh, safe understanding and safe management of uh, uh, glycemic control, right? Um, there is an interesting study done by uh, a group in uh, John Hopkins University um, they 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 had recruited two group of patients and uh, one patient educated them with the hemoglobin A1C. Uh, instead, another group educated them with their uh, concept of EAG, and they did find that I expected after about three to four weeks of a trial. They assessed the patient's knowledge on uh, uh, diabetics and the glycemic control. They did see that the knowledge improved significantly in both, both A1C group and uh, the uh, EAG group. However, the increase among between those two groups are not significant. Both are 32% of increase and was 33% of increase. So this indicates that uh, EAG may not be a, a better a rememberable or better understanding marker uh, for, for patient uh, to take into the uh, uh, diabetic management. Uh, another assumption on EAG is that it is supposed to, it's supposed to be to improve the patient's glycemic control and uh, cardiovascular risk reduction. Um, to this uh, assumption, 
we did a study in the province of uh, uh, New Brunswick in Canada. So where's the New Brunswick? Uh, it's a small province on the east coast of Canada, uh, highlighted in red here, uh, with a population of about 750,000. Um, um, this, that's the provincial flag of their province. And uh, in this province, they used to have a aid regional health authority. And uh, since uh, 2008, uh, Horizon Health and the Vitality Health Network were funded. So those uh, uh, areas highlighted in blue, uh, area two, three, and seven, belongs to uh, Horizon uh, Health Network, uh, an English speaking um, um, uh, RHA. And the areas on north, uh, four, five, and six, highlighted in yellow, are uh, uh, mostly Francophone speaking uh, populations. And uh, uh, there's a Vitality Health Lead workers providing uh, health service there. And on the uh, East Coast, uh, it's uh, uh, shaded here. Uh, actually, the populations, uh, uh, Anglophone and the Francophone speaking populations overlaps there. Uh, so there are two original uh, hospitals for, for uh, uh, Horizon Health and the Vitality Health service there. Uh, so that's zone 1A or 1.1 and 1B or 1.2. And the provincial capital is Fredericton, where I'm sitting here uh, speaking to you. Uh, and in 2010, one of those eight uh, regional uh, health authority zones start implement the EAG. Uh, so this providing good control uh, for uh, e examination, the efficacy of uh, this new concept and uh, glycemic control and the cardiovascular risk reduction. Okay, so that's the aim of this study to evaluate the clinical outcome of a population glycemic control and the cardiovascular risk levels before and after the implementation of EAG in this RHA zone, zone 1.1. And also compare the overall outcome of this zone with the seven other RHA zones that do not implement the EAG. Okay, so we extracted the data from the Provincial Diabetic Registry from 2008 to 2014. So there are about 0.8 million uh, A1C data uh, points there and about 0.6 uh, LDL cholesterol values were extracted. Um, because the data uh, did not belong to the Gaussian distribution, so we extracted a median and interquartile ranges uh, using the R software for each quarter between this time range. And uh, we uh, used uh, Kushka Valley statistic were costing signed the rank test and a cash square test uh, for their statistic analysis. Okay, so this graph highlights their uh, A1C, uh, the A1C distribution change uh, before and after um, the implementation of EAG in Zoom 1.1. So the rate is the, the distribution after EAG reporting in this Zoom in uh, 2010. And we can see the A1C uh, value distribution shifted to the right after uh, implementation. Uh, that is uh, shifted to the higher end a little bit. And on the country, we see the uh, LDL cholesterol distribution uh, after EAG implementation shifted to the left hand a bit in this room and statistically uh, significant on both uh, A1C uh, value and on the LDL cholesterol value in this room. 
And to compare, okay. And, and the, this indicates that uh, the, uh, the percentage of a patient which say pretty target before and after EAG reporting in this room. Um, we can see that since the EAG reporting, the uh, patient which glycemic control level, which is hemoglobin A1C less than 7%, actually dropped from uh, about 50% to, uh, to uh, about 45%, uh, and then slowly coming back in, in uh, 2013, 2014. However, the, the uh, population, a proportion of uh, patients which uh, um, uh, LDL cholesterol level less than 2.6 millimolar per liter actually continues increasing uh, with the time. To compare this zoom uh, that implemented EAG with other rooms that uh, do not implement EAG reporting, uh, we can see the proportion of uh, patients which uh, glycemic control level, and this room is pretty much in the intermediate level compared to all other several rooms. And similarly, the proportion of um, um, patient which their uh, uh, cardiovascular risk reduction, LDL cholesterol level less than 2.6, uh, in this zoom, zoom 1.1 1 .1, uh, is also in the intermediate level compared to all other seven rooms that did not utilize uh, EAG concept. And those are the data and the adult population. Okay, for the EAG, uh, for the uh, hemoglobin A1C and median value, uh, we look at this zoom highlighted in dark line. It's also sitting in among pretty much the, the middle of all the seven, eight rooms. And uh, similarly, the uh, median level of LDL cholesterol over time from 2008 to 2014 of this zoom uh, that report EAG actually sit on the middle level of all the say, eight rooms of the province. The value is not really standing out in, in both hemoglobin A1C and LDL cholesterol. Okay, uh, to compare the distribution of this room, room 1.1 in, in blue with other rooms, uh, statistically, we can see a hemoglobin A1C value of this room that implemented EAG uh, was significantly better than, uh, the, than uh, zone two, three, and seven, but actually uh, worse than uh, zone four and uh, six and A1C. On the earlier cholesterol side, uh, this zone uh, performance was uh, significantly better uh, then the uh, room two and the four, um, but actually worse than, uh, than three, um, five, uh, then three and uh, six and seven. And there's no difference, no statistical difference compared to zoom five. Okay. So those are the value for the adult population. So look at the pediatric population of this uh, province. Uh, we extracted about uh, 7,000 uh, data points for hemoglobin A1C and about 2,000 data points for LDL cholesterol. So similar to the adult population after uh, EAG reporting in this Zoom, Zoom 1.1, after uh, the EAG implementation, uh, hemoglobin A1C value shifted to the right. And the uh, LDL cholesterol level distribution shifted to the left a bit. And uh, this highlights the proportion of a patient, pediatric patient uh, 
uh, who reached their uh, therapeutic target for A1C and LDL cholesterol. So we can see the, the, the A1C therapeutic target, uh, people which this target decrease a bit after uh, EAG reporting. Uh, however, LDL cholesterol, uh, the population which the LDL cholesterol level uh, keep uh, increasing over the time. Those are very similar to the adult population. And why, why the LDL cholesterol level um, performance different than A1C? We're thinking probably the most reason is not because of the EAG reporting, because this one is not, did, did not have a statistically much significance compared to other zones. Uh, but we are thinking the major reason may be because of the uh, advocacy of a statin use since uh, 2010 among North America in States and Canada uh, uh, guidelines. Okay, so this highlight the, this zoom compared to seven other zones performance and the population of uh, pediatric diabetic patient which is a critical target for hemoglobin A1C and the LDL cholesterol. We can see that uh, this one's performance is not really standing out. And similarly, overall meeting of uh, hemoglobin A1C and LDL cholesterol level in this room, highlighted in the dark line, compared to seven other rooms, uh, it's not really uh, significant. So look at the deeply uh, statistical analysis uh, and hemoglobin A1C value, the median value in this zone compared to other zones. Uh, it did have a uh, significance compared to zone three uh, and zone seven. It shows a better performance, but shows a worse performance compared to zone four and the six. And there was no difference compared to zone 1.2 and zone five and hemoglobin A1C. So on LDL cholesterol, uh, zone 1.1 that uh, implemented EAG uh, performs better than um, zone two and uh, zone three. Uh, but worse than seven, and there's no statistic, statistical significance compared to zoom 1.1, 1 1.2, 4, 5, and seven. Okay, so to conclude, this indicates that uh, the utilization of EAG has demonstrated no significant impact on patient care in either lab testing interpretation patient understanding or under uh, glycemic control and the cardiovascular risk reduction. So I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Dana Wan, uh, who was a visiting scholar, spent a year uh, in my laboratory, uh, did uh, all most of those work uh, herself. And Dr. George Stocker, uh, uh, mathematics and the statistic guru, uh, helped us for their uh, statistic analysis. And uh, Claire Jordan is an analyst from the Provincial Diabetes Registry, um, provide us excellent uh, technical support. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, send me email. Um, uh, I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Bye-bye.